No, Armando, sorry. Even though your logic is, your reasoning is logically constructed, it is fundamentally wrong in its in, its, in the premise of its perspective, not just on the situation, but in, in, in the essence of how you're thinking about society and the police's function towards our society. And it's not just you. We have a problem in the States. And I'll just, first time I'll say something. I've been observing this subject, I've been thinking and writing different types of, on different issues on the subject for several years. And so that means that I'm always observing, I'm always analyzing and paying attention. And there's a characteristic of our cultural personality that has recently come to my attention, which has always been there for God knows how long, but I've never identified and depict it. And it is that when in a country, in a given society, people are talking about what to do about society, how to handle a problem that involves the behavior of other people, and um, we're talking about necessary measures that need to be taken, and I suppose what is happening now has made me uh, revisit that kind of uh, perspective and notice something. When we talk about, for example, um, the law or uh, a country's government is going to have to implement a certain type of regiment or um, mandate upon the people like has happened recently, what I notice is that the majority of countries, and I have lived Basically, I am familiar with Argentina and with Europe, with how people are in Europe and Italy mainly, and people in general. Because you can say that while I I was I lived in the United States, I was immersed in many in families from different cultures, Persian or other cultures, other society, other um, exponents of other societies living in their home in their family, and so the manner of being with each other kind of reflected as an extension of that country into experiences that I've had in the States as well. And when it comes to saying, well, you know, we're going to have to tell people to do something, everybody naturally has, I wouldn't say an apprehension, but um, um, some like a, a, a slowing down where you realize that the requirement involves curtailing a person's freedom. When you tell somebody to do anything, I don't care if it's your parent or your boss or you, you're a teacher and you, you instruct your students, to, you're in a sense saying, don't exercise your will. In this case, do this or do that. This human action. We usually wait and slow down a little bit because we realize that everybody has a certain observance or if not resistance or um, a certain moment of of I will decide if I'm going to listen to what you're telling me to do which is sort of built into our nature human nature it's just part of what we can expect another person will will react to such an expectation by us of them and so what I've seen is that in lately with what is happening, a manner, a, a manner in which people are thinking about telling people what to do is, it's, it's, it's restrained, it's a little held back, you know, they, there's a little bit of a sober sort of um, uh, respectful atomacy, I don't, I don't know quite how to put it, but you can tell that a person doesn't take lightly that they are instructing and telling somebody what to do in any culture. It's just an, a moment, an instance of human interaction which is particularly observable. And when I thought about America and how we are, and how, for example, I can imagine a meeting of CEOs telling, well, we're going to have to tell, you know, we're going to have to talk about marketing and how to sell something and what 
what their stores are going to act like towards customers and you know I can think of many situations and I will conclude that our personal uh, personality, cultural personality is unique in that we seem to be inclined and prone to take very lightly uh, a spontaneous um, a frivolous, uh, a frivolous, friv frivolous attitude towards bossing people, towards almost humorously uh, thinking about how to dominate, how to control, how to tell people what to do. We expect that we can order people, uh, and I'm not saying that we're all that different in in the actual vocabulary or language and the way in which we do it but in the attitude, in our personality, and then that gets reflected in how we act towards each other. And now let's go back to this incident. The police of a country, okay, let's start at the very beginning. The police institution of a nation is basically uh, the, the state drawing out from the citizenship people who want to professionally um, uh, and you know it's not enforce is not the word that, that we ought to first use it is how to enact the structure and purpose of the law among the citizenship and so people uh, are trained and they but they, it comes from from the people it comes from the citizenship it's not from the military and it's not directly from the state it is a citizen who chooses to be a police officer. And so the institution is drawn from the citizenship for its own uh, tutelage, for, for taking care of their own people, right? This, this is the nature, the original nature of, uh, of, of, of the, the emergence of the police institution, even though that later, even if later we have, there are different categories that, are, that seem to approximate more authority uh, with a, a somewhat more uh, a militant, you know, the sheriff department, the federals, whatever, uh, compared to the city police, and you know, there's different levels. But the whole um, profession is supposed to be for taking care of the citizen. And when we say uh, guiding, taking care of the citizenship, in light or in the context of um, guiding or, or 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 making sure. Uh, or verifying, or insisting, or, uh, you know, this is the spirit in which uh, it, it, it should be looked at, because that is, that is the, uh, the, the, uh, the nature of its essence. Obey the law, and follow the law. Um, and then the police are empowered if, if, a, if a citizen resists, uh, or continues to hurt or hurts other citizens and they are empowered with apprehension with uh, with uh, you know being able to restrain and, and you know uh, imprison that person correct but you have to order this properly to understand the true function and to be able to criticize according by what the institution is meant to be. Because what I hear is a lot of talk that sounds like the citizen is meant to be treated like, um, like a, something unknown that could just, you don't know what to expect, something random, like, a, like the unseen enemy of a war, uh, a battlefield, you know, you, the, 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 the systemology, if you will, of, of protocol and how to act before the appearance of a gun and all that seems to describe um, a police institution that is actually uh, a military uh, uh, squadron, <laughs> you know, that is, uh, has to consider completely unforecastable whatever they may find beyond those walls. And that is not the police of a country. That is not what the police of a country is. The police of a country is um, is in tutelage or in or in in, a, in a, how can you say that? It, a, a sort of application of law and administration, 
civil law and civil uh, um, administration of a people who live naturally, a people that would be familiar, the different hues of a culture, the, the freedom, the freedom in which a society lives is what they should be aware are dealing with, who they are working for, who they're taking care of, are people living freely in a society with everything that can happen to anybody in this natural world and all the different situations which people in the, in its, in the thousands of cases may be living like. And when you put it in that perspective, it means that a police officer is aware of what they're going to encounter in their city, in their town, in their country, in their culture. Uh, is it a child? Uh, where are the parents' child? Is, where are the child's parents, I mean? Is it a, t a group of teenagers? Is it a, a group of young people using uh, wielding drugs or, or, or maybe... Uh, making drugs in the basement or is it a, a gathering of adults for in what kind of gathering of adults and these different definitions or, or people playing or at a club or at a birthday party or whatever the situation is they are uh, they would be um, how can I say this they, they would have the quality or the advantage of relating instantly more than a soldier would, for example, in, in, a, in our military institution, as to immediately have a familiarity of what that means. How old are the teenagers? Well, what are they doing? Oh, are they smoking pot? Or are they drug addicts shooting up drugs, you know? All these things should be part of their people. They should go into that situation knowing um, the re with a palpable reality of what is going on in that house or in that space and knowing what those people or that person is all about. The way you guys are talking about using guns it doesn't sound like a police engaging their own people. It sounds like uh, a blind uh, mechanical uh, a robocop that is programmed to uh, engage the, the the randomly unforecastable, unpredictable. It doesn't matter what's behind that gun, in other words. And the police of a country is exactly the opposite of that. Everything that matters is who's behind that gun and why is that gun a possible, a poss a possible risk. In that context of comprehension, they did continue to push. They reorganized themselves, they pulled back, and I find it very uh, annoying to hear that you guys are trying so hard to justify something just by because you want to make it right. You want them to be right. You don't want to look at the situation objectively and really understand it perhaps there's an error of perspective on, on behalf of you guys. You, you are, you're just really looking for ways to, to be right about it. And that's really what, you know, what irks me a little bit. Because they did push forward. Pulling back means, whoa, this girl, we're, doing, we're going about it the wrong way. This girl, we, you know, it's mental services that should be here, not us. And the police should, be able to, should have been able to say that and realize that at the moment she started fumbling with a gun, she was fumbling with a gun. She wasn't aiming. She wasn't uh, hiding behind the couch, taking aim. Uh, and, she, you know, if she had, like, professionally prepared, attacked, you know, gotten behind, like, like, like a Hollywood movie, gotten behind the door and, and looked to see what shot, what, what, co what cop she could get, then I understand the whole procedure, you know, the whole procedure and protocol that they, that they carried through would make a little more sense. But that was not the person behind the gun that they were dealing with. The person behind the gun that they were dealing with, you can see she was flagile. It was weighted. She was weighted. She didn't know. She didn't even want that gun in her hand. She didn't really, you know, and she put it out there. And, and God knows, even if, 
she was asking, and this is exactly the point. It may be that she was asking for it to be over somehow by confronting those that are unstoppably uh, set against her. And so she had some kind of psychological thing where, you know, I'm going to provoke him all the way, you know, put that gun out there, maybe they'll shoot and maybe it'll exp I don't think anything that was going on through her head had any, any, uh, you know, any, any logical um, comprehension. I think she needed mental health. Those police officers should not have been there. But let's just humor the situation that she, in some degree, in some capacity, presented a danger because she put that gun out there and she had it, she was waving it around. I'm a human being. I don't care how many uniforms and how many, uh, you know, rifles are backing me up and guns. I am still a human being who's capable of thinking, she, it looks like she uh, is about to get into a situation where she may, it may come off or she actually is asking to be killed, like suicide by cop. So am I so stupid as to be prey to that? Am I so stupid as to function for that madness and go ahead and kill her? Or am I not capable of saying this looks like a suicide by cop situation, let's get out of here, let's, you know, leave her alone in the house and send over an ambulance. You know, because another thing that must be understood is that the violence, the reason, and you guys ignore the reason why she pulls out the gun. She, like nothing exists behind the gun. You simply, it's like, it's like you, 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 you think the police should basic, basically act like they trained be, uh, for target shooting. Uh, a, 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 a trunk with a picture of a, a bunny rabbit on it, and they organize a system and they train to use their body a certain way and everything that has to do with uh, shooting that gun from that trunk in this direction. There is nothing behind, nothing alive behind that trunk, you know? So it's all about what they learn, what, the learning of their skill. But that's training. <laughs> now, in the real word, world, it turns out that there is another half of the world behind that gun, that they as human beings need to be able to understand and rationalize and know what to do, identify, change need be, everything depending on what's on the other side of that gun you can't treat the gun as it is as if it was floating by itself in the air and then have a whole system of protocol to act against that mysteriously floating gun before them no there's a person that will shoot that trigger just like they are completely insane and shooting 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 triggers there's also somebody who may not be as insane as they are who actually needs help and is holding a gun because she, for whatever reason, you know, they should be able to say, wait, this is what's happening on the other side of that gun. My training does not serve me here. This is not going to work. This is not applicable. Now, if you don't have that taking care of citizens, what do you have taking care of citizens? Machines? Would you trust your babies, your wife, your daughters to be running around in the front yard when machines are patrolling our cities? Would, would it not be a concern for, this, for, the, for the people of a country that, yeah, they were developed, you know, they seem to have the best software, but still, there are machines carrying guns that can instantly kill people. I don't know if I want to have machines patrolling. Well, it seems that America is being conditioned to be all right with police being machines. And this is what my point is. They needed to understand that whether it be suicide by cop, whether it be she was really not understanding what she was doing and didn't realize, she may have not even realized that she was, she definitely, you know, very likely did not realize that she, that something horrible could happen if she took out the gun and she would end up dead. 
Who knows what she thought? People think all sorts of stuff about the world, and we have such a fantasy civilization. People grow up watching films and listening to crazy people say anything on, on TV, on the mo in movies, on the internet. And, you know, what people come to believe about the world today is almost unpredictable, certainly not as predictable as it was a hundred years ago. And just that capable need to be people who are, who are going to have an instrument of killing human life in their hand subject to a blind protocol that simply acts because somebody held up a gun. That could mean nothing. It could mean a five-year-old coming out, you know, uh, trying to defend his dad from officers that look like they're about to kill him. So he takes out a gun and says, no, don't kill my dad. And are you going to kill that child? Because in his little mind, he thought he was doing the right thing? No. That's why we would want holding the guns of an institution that's going to take care of our people, intelligent human beings that understand what can happen in any social situation, not machines. Okay? I hope you understood the point this time. To give an example of what I mean, there is a picture that um, the Real News Network used to, uh, you know, as a banner to its video, whatever, the, the main picture that, that uh, is at the start of the video. And clearly, it, it's intentional. It's so that people look at it and maybe think. There is that guy with a telescope lens on the rifle aiming upstairs where Vanessa was, you know, waving a gun or whatever it was, was happening, or she, perhaps she wasn't even out of her room yet. It seems to me that he came afterwards when the guy told him he, she has a gun. Now, first of all, the police have had many instances where children or women have guns that are BB guns. They keep it in their purse and they don't really know how to use it. Maybe one of those little girl, you know, lady guns or what have you. They are people, they are people that know that a lot of women and a lot of perhaps even guys have guns that, that you know, they just want to be safe and maybe they haven't taken a course on how to use it, but they keep a gun. The point is, when that kid because he was a kid, he was a punk, the guy that came out running, oh, she's got a gun, she's got a gun, and startled everybody. Could not, could they not have had an instant, an instant in which they, they, they thought about, did you see what kind of gun it was? Was it, are you sure it wasn't something that looked a toy gun or a BB gun? Could they not have sat for a second and talked about the situation, about the reality of the situation? Just like what, how people maturely say, well, you know, he or she is talking that way, but really what they, what is most likely the case is that they're only saying that because they're angry at the moment. And, you know, people, we all talk about that, about uh, regarding people's real motivations. This was a real situation. When you see the absurdity of a, a, a rifle, what did, what did he need all that aiming capacity for? You know, uh, it, there is no correspondence between that guy leaning with that rifle on the stairwell as if, as if he had to wait, wait for a, a saber-toothed tiger to jump out of a behind from behind a tree and make sure that it shot him in the right place before it pounced on him. That's what, you know, that's what would correspond to that guy using, that's why the, that picture says it all. That picture sh expresses the absurd extreme that we have reached, how, how ridiculously disconnected from the, reality, the social reality of, of, 
of these events, of these inst these things that are happening in our society, the police department has gotten. They operate this whole this whole organization, this whole protocol, this whole thing, all those people gathered in, 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 in her living in her living room, in her kitchen. For what exactly? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about who was up the stairs. Who was upstairs? How old was that girl? Was it is it somebody that we know to have taken a gun class and knows how to shoot? Because I suppose that the police have a register of the people who have taken uh, lessons on shooting a gun. No? <laughs> I think they do. Um, was that kid not able to say uh, it looked... It didn't really look like she was uh, intent on coming out and killing and shooting me or shooting anybody. She just drew it out of, a, uh, of, her, of her desk and, and kind of fumbled with it. As opposed to saying, you know, um, she's taken position in the bathroom and she looked like she was also taking with her a, a magazine, <laughs> uh, you know. I mean, these are completely different situations that he could have described which one was the case when he went back to his partners, which would have had them react accordingly, <laughs> not put a guy with a rifle and a super aim telescope <laughs> it is so ridiculous so absurd and you know maybe i understand that you guys react you know when i say absurd and ridiculous it kind of makes you want to be defensive and it, it just seems excessive but there is really no other way of of of, of trying to get the point across something that, in order to illustrate what this chasm <laughs> is about how do you put a label on this chasm that is between the reality of social situations of this girl this wanted to be successful Hollywood actress little frail thing suffering anorexia never not probably not really she does not she, they had visited her before they had seen her before uh, the mental health people could have told her no this is not a person who is you know uh, cleverly and skillfully um, a danger as far as fire weapons go you know this is not a person who is sharp on it on top of it and uh, aggressively focused somebody that would look at somebody and consciously premeditate how to kill that person using a gun that is not who this person was now, the fact that nobody could even come close to that area of understanding of another human being is the problem. This is the chasm to which saying ridiculously, absurdly disproportioned is referring to. That we are blind before the human social reality of these situations, of these events. Another case, the guy in Las Vegas who is pleading and begging, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. <laughs> I mean, you guys, how much material do you need to stop making it obvious you're being stubborn and proud? How much evidence do you need on the internet to show that, you, that we have a problem? We have a problem. That guy was, was saying, don't shoot me, please, and he shot him. The officer shot him because he freaked out, because he's nervous, because he, he only knows how to, how, to, how to act according to his memorized training, because the police department is being trained by war mentality that needs to defend, again, defend itself. Where is the, where is the male courage and character? I mean... Where is the man that said uh, that you know that puts his life life is his life is secondary before the life of another citizen? No, the, the we have adopted a kill the citizen before one of our own is risking his life. That's not the police department. That's not that's getting an easy paycheck. <laughs> that's what that is. 
That is not saying I, uh, moral character and service of the people that may involve risking your own life to serve your fellow citizen, to serve your fellow American. No, some point in the past, we have decided that the police, that any, any unforeseen risk is not worth the life of a police officer, which is exactly the opposite of the vocational definition of a police officer anywhere in the world, any time in history. In the States, we have turned it around. Why? Because with this characteristic that I mentioned in the last video, we have slowly and slowly been turning into individuals who take it very lightly how to control and dominate other, others. And when you think about controlling and dominating others, telling them easily and frivolously what they're gonna, what they're going to be need to be what they're going to need to be doing what you're actually doing is dehumanizing the other person because the other person is now a, a piece on a board that you can move around control and dominate and tell what to do because there is no more of that empathy that makes you think twice before you boss somebody and 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 will your will upon that person's will, which is the normal human circumstance in which there is mutual respect of both wills because no will of the other wants to be bullied by the will of another. So everybody that is human and humanly sensitive in the, in the natural capacity of the human being is careful before you tell somebody you it may be your job, you may be a leader, you may be a manager, you may be a whatever. And so people who are leaders and managers are very respectful in how they deliver administrative ordering of other people or telling, instructing other people what to do. In our society, that has become very, uh, very frivolous, very uh, devalued. We think it's the game. We think it's funny. We'll just tell people what to do. We'll just, and that leads to, it may not seem like something so big, but what that is leading to is dehumanization. Police officers that now apply blindly, massively, monstrously their protocol of procedure upon the citizenship, completely forgetting that the vocational value of service ever existed, of putting your life before the life of your citizen, before the life of your uh, civil, um, your, uh, your, 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 your fellow citizen ever existed. It, it, it has been obliterated because our insistence on making dominating protocol, procedure, administrative, judging, ju you know, obey, 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 controlling, dominating has, be has blown out of, dis out of proportion so badly in our country that we're becoming dehumanized, not just in the police institution, but in other ways of, of thinking about civil reasoning on why people should behave or think of the way they do regarding sexuality, regarding uh, how they are in school, how parents are towards their children. Everything is getting conditioned by this. I, we, can, we can just think what somebody else needs to think. We can just decide what somebody else needs, needs to, has to believe because that's the right thing that they should. How do we get this way? How do we get it? comes from, I believe, I have a theory because this is where I no longer am so confident as to how did, where did this start happening. I believe it started happening possibly through being a, mil a militaristic uh, society, a militaristic country, which comes back from England and doesn't, and the United States has never stopped warring the world since it was created, basically. And this is not an exaggeration because you look at more than half the rest of the world and countries have existed for a hundred years without warring anybody or 50 years without warring anybody and we have pretty much not had a rest since we <laughs> since we, so you know to say that the united states has only been a warring nation but 
let's say maybe that is not so unique because other countries have has been belligerent in a, in continuum for many decades or also like the United States since the, their creation but what comes to mind is having won the second world war and the english language dominating the communication understanding and education to do with the victors and who the victors are and and what we have done for the world and and how you know our democracy is righteous and everybody else are or, you know, incompetent and trying, you know, whatever, you know, kind of lesser countries that are not free democracies like we are. And thank goodness we liberated the world, right? And, and all that mumbo jumbo. And so that has led to a society, a culture that slowly, with that message getting repeated and rehashed over through generations, slowly thinking that, yeah, you know, we just got to tell everybody how to think, what to do, and what's right and what's wrong. And that's kind of where I believe perhaps we have taken a stronger uh, veering off to, uh, you know, uh, the opposite, which would be non-warring societies like many Catholic countries or, uh, or Buddhist countries, you know, that uh, have known uh, decades without ever confronting or warring and so their their cultural personality is, is is very humble compared to us you know they would never just start telling people what to do and and judging and I'll tell you you know what they need to do and, and why they're and what kind of people they are I'm going to categorize them and judge them and you know they're very much the opposite of that especially Buddhist countries Hindu Hindu countries you know these are modest modest meek people and the Catholics, some Catholics who some, you know, most, there is a, a, a slight, a slight uh, uh, more towards that than what you would say Protestant countries like uh, uh, most of Germany and England and, and Sweden and America, you know, countries that have uh, a, more of a Protestant upbringing. And then if you add to that, they have been warring countries. Uh, all of a sudden you may seem a big, di you may see a big difference to to catholic countries but mainly to uh you know islamic countries funny enough uh are a combination because they have a warring message of of, of resistance of, of, of self-pride and, and you know uh not bowing down to your enemies and so forth the catholics don't have because it's all about sacrificing yourself and sacrificing the male needs to be crucified you know um so you can't really compare, but all this area, I don't want to mix things up. It's very interesting. Uh, and I, perhaps I'm explaining this because I, I don't, I realize that you, you people think that I'm just a crazy maniac that wants to attack and hates America and, and, and no, <laughs> you're wrong. I come from really uh, paying attention to humanity, to the world and why we are the way we are, I think about myself in terms of how I was brought up by my children, by my, <laughs> yeah, right, my parents, who were children themselves, and how so many others in the States have grown up with problems, and so I'm a, I, I like social analysis, psychology, psychology, sociology, and this is really where I come from, even though sometimes you have to use labels. So I'm just correcting that, which a lot of you have misinterpreted, and it's typical of the internet to create two camps or fighting opposites you know who what side are you on he's one of those those are the lefties you know and they're all they're all whatever and you know this uh, binary polarity that is so humanly basic very unsophisticated way of understanding what we're all subject to commonly as as a whole humanity in a spherical sense uh you know with a, a center <laughs> not in two opposites um which is more anyways so i hope i was clear this time and i cleared things up a little bit for some